What is happening to Bigger Pockets? It's Matt Faircloth. So today we're going to talk about loans because there's a lot of different loans out there. There's a lot of different ways that you can borrow money, a lot of different structures that you can do uh, for borrowing money for your deals. But not every loan works for every kind of deal and not every loan is, the, is best suited for the kind of deal that you should be doing, right? So we're going to talk about what kind of loan do you need for the deal that you got, okay? So let's say you got it. Let's, let's start with deal number one. You got a wholesale. Okay, if you got a wholesale deal, you may not need a loan at all because maybe you're gonna put the property under agreement, get control of the property, and then you're gonna sell your contract that, that gives you control off to another investor and you're gonna take an assignment fee at closing, and there is no loan, okay? Aside from maybe you need a business loan to get yourself going, which you get through like an unsecured line of credit or a credit card or whatever, that you might need for just business capital for marketing and everything like that. So that's, I'll even put that, I didn't think, I wasn't gonna do that, but I'll put that down, right? So um, like a line of credit or a credit card, okay, um, for business. Or if you're doing it for a closing, there is a shot. Now this was heavily prevalent in the uh, short sale days, like in 2009, 2010, when people were short selling properties left and right, um, where you would, lock, a wholesaler would lock a property up for X and then they would sell it to investor B for Y. And they would need to do what's called an A to B closing, like meaning they would need to actually buy the property, and then they would need to hold it and then sell it to investor C. So it's called A to B and then a B to C. The wholesaler is B, the original seller is A, the end buyer is C, okay? The end buyer is the person that's gonna take, the investor or the homeowner or whatever that's gonna take the property. So. There are times where a wholesaler has to do it. If you want to speak wholesaler talk, they talk about doing an A to B to C closing, everything like that. So if you're going to do that, there is a short-term loan that you're going to need so that you can buy the property to do the A to B closing. You can close that transaction. Then you're going to need to sell the property to the C buyer at the end. There's a short-term loan that you're going to need. When I say short-term, I'm talking days. And if you can get it really, really down tight, you can buy the property on one day and close on it, like buy it in the morning and then sell it in the afternoon the same day. Not so many title companies are willing to do that these days. So let's say you might need to let it float for a day or two, for 24 to 48 hours, right? But no more than that. Um, if that's the case, if that's what you're doing, there's something called a transactional loan. Come on, there you go. that you can get a transactional loan. And now there are, again, there are a ton of terms and um, agreements around these types of things and ways that the lender protects their collateral. Like a lot of times they might want to um, see a, co a copy of your C buyer contract. Your C buyer might need to be really strong. Your C buyer might need to lay a certain amount of money down. The, the transactional lender might want to make sure that you're using a title, co a title company that they're comfortable with whatever it is, and they will loan you the money to float the deal just for a day or two, okay? Their rates can be expensive. You might end up paying one to 2% per day, a day, one to 2% a day for floating the money like that. Hey, it's enough, if, if there's enough meat on the bone in your wholesale to make, the, to make it worthwhile, maybe it's worth doing. Um, but that's called a transactional loan. Now that's the kind of loan you might need if you got a wholesale going on, right? So let's say you got a fix and flip. Okay, if you got a fix and flip, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Now, um, fix and flips, again, are short-term product. And what's interesting about a fix and flip, which also applies to the Burr method, which we're gonna talk about in a second, you need construction money. And if you play your cards right, you can borrow your construction money from your lender as well, okay? So you can either do a regular bank. Now, banks will, banks will loan you, can, some banks, will loan you construction money on top of the loan that they give you. Typically, it'll be a small community bank right around the property that you're flipping, okay? So you can get a bank to loan you the part of the purchase price and then part of the construction loan, you can get that. Or you can get a bank to just loan you on the purchase price and you can come out of pocket and lay down the money for, uh, for construction. Not every bank will do this. Not every bank will touch a fix and flip that's a vacant property that needs a bunch of work. Um, most banks that I work with that'll touch fix and flips require 
that you uh, borrow a certain amount of interest reserve from them, meaning they're lending you the interest as well as the uh, as the the principal that you need to, to renovate the property. And they they take that interest reserve and set it aside in a, in a small bank account that they draw down to pay the interest each month. Right. So that's for a bank. Now you can also uh, go to a uh, a hard money lender. Okay, hard money lender will gladly lend to you uh, the money to buy the property and the money to uh, renovate it as well. The rate's going to be a lot more expensive than a bank will, um, but they will lend that to you as well. And by the way, banks and hard money lenders, and the next one we're going to talk about, are all going to require something called a construction draw. Okay. Okay. The way construction draws work is that means that if you need $100,000 in renovation, they're not going to give you that hundred grand all up front. They're going to give you a small chunk of it as you need it. And typically, it's, they're not going to give it to you until you've already done that phase okay. of the work. So that's how a construction draw program works. So they, they're going to expect you to renovate and then you get some money. Then renovate, then you get some money. So they can kind of they can make sure that you don't get ahead of them on, their, on what uh, they've given you for renovations versus how much you've actually spent on the property. Okay, the last one is a private lender. This is someone out of your own network that you might know um, that, uh, that maybe has some IRA cash or has, a, uh, or has just some of their own money that they can loan to you and make a great return on their money while they help you renovate houses, okay? So either a private money lender, somebody that you negotiated a deal with personally, a home money lender, or a bank, okay? Now, the other type of deal that you may have, let's say you got a Burr rental deal. That's the buy, renovate, rent out, refinance, and repeat. I just have to talk it up. Make sure I have to make sure I get the right amount of R's. You know, so I have to say each one when I do it. Okay. The Burr method is identical to the flip. It's this. It's everything here when you buy and renovate the property. Okay. So this, but these two, this B and this R. Okay are on the, the same model as a fix and flip, okay? The refinance portion is gonna come from the bank, okay? Now you can either use a bank to buy it and do the renovation underneath the bank, or you can renovate it and then bring a bank in behind and have them refinance out. On when I do Burr, I prefer to do it that way. I'll bring in a private lender, use their money to renovate it, then I go back to the bank to refinance, okay? Um, then I rent it out, and I refinance and repeat. And the reason why you want to refinance and repeat is because if you do it well, you'll be able to pull all your private money out on the refinance side so you can repeat and do it over and over and over again. Okay? So the Burr method is it's like a flip finance plus bank on the refinance. That's Burr. That's what you want to use on this. You can use hard money lender, no problem, but you also need to make sure you got your bank lined up to get you out to refinance you when you're done. When you're done, okay? So let's say you want to do a small rental deal. Now, when I say small amount, small rental, that let's just say that's uh, it could be a single family home. Uh, a lot of times, this is a uh, turnkey. A turnkey is pretty much buying a stabilized rental asset. It's already had all the work done. It's already been renovated. It's like a burr, except for you're buying it. It's like buying a burr, except for without the refinance, you're just buying it right here. You know, it's already been bought, rented out, uh, bought, rent, renovated, rented out. You're buying it right here. And so you're paying for somebody else's labor to do it. But if you're not investing full time in this business, it's very hard to actualize this. You're better off maybe buying just turnkey rentals, okay? Um, if you're not doing this business full time and you want, the, you want to reap the benefits of real estate, but you can't or don't want to and you enjoy what you do for a living and you don't want to quit your job or not in a position to quit your job yet, you can buy some turnkeys, okay? The way you want to finance a turnkey or a small rental deal, which is somewhere between, let's say, one, maybe even one to 10 even, but it's typically one to four units. That's, that's most of the time that I see these type of transactions happen, but it can be a little bit larger. A little bit larger, you get into the next one, which is apartment buildings. Um, but a small rental or a turnkey deal, you're just going to go straight to a bank. And you're going to have to bring your own cash to the table. Okay? Um, this is one where you need to have money. You don't necessarily need to have too much of your own money in to do a, do a burr or the wholesale thing or the fix and the flip if you play your cards right. Many of these require a ton of your own capital on the table if you play your cards right. The small rental turnkey deal, you will have to bring money to the table. 
Um, because, and believe me, take it from somebody who tried to do it. You, it's very hard to buy a turnkey on short term money. Yeah, it just, it's, it's, unless you, unless the market just goes up and you can just factor in appreciation and then refinance to get the money back out, then it's not going to happen. You're right. You're better off assuming the property is going to stay stable on value and then just buy with a regular bank loan, pay the bank loan off over time, bring your own equity to the table and get a good cash on cash return for your money. So that's the kind of loan you want to you want to use when you want to ask what kind of loan you want to need you need for a small rental turnkey deal. It's just a regular bank loan if the property is already stabilized. Okay, if you're buying here in the cycle. Okay, now let's say you want to buy an apartment building or other commercial deal. Because of where the market is right now and today, that we were in a market that's going up and up and up. Um, the, the deal, the way to make money on these kinds of deals is on a value add deal. Okay. Now what a value add deal means is a deal where it's like, well, rent's a little bit low, property needs some work. That's the kind of department buildings that we do is deals that need a lot of work, the deals that need to get, uh, need to get some renovations done to bring value up, whatever it is. Um, and it's almost like Burr on, on a way larger scale, except for what's great is you don't have to do the Burr method for an apartment building and go and bring in a private lender or whatever. There are banks that understand that you're adding a lot of value. These are larger banks, uh, banks that focus mainly on apartment building, and they're gonna give you something called a bridge loan. Okay. Where a bridge loan works is this is typically an interest only, probably a floating interest rate loan where they're going to loan you the purchase price plus some of the renovation costs, okay? And they're going to loan that to you, interest only, until you stabilize the asset and they're going to let you refinance it into, into a permanent loan. Okay, so bridge, refinance into a perm, okay? That's what it's called. Um, and some banks call it rolling it to a perm, but you want to make sure you're refinancing it when you do this so you can pull out some of the value that you've added in the renovation because you're going to get rents up, you're going to improve the apartments. And remember, apartment buildings are valued strictly on the amount of money that they make. They're valued on NOI. So if you can increase rents and add amenities and do whatever it is to increase the NOI on the property, then the value will go way up. You can then pull out more value out of the apartment building okay. through this refi when you roll into a perm. So make sure that that's the structure that you use. But that right there is, those are the type of apartment buildings and maybe commercial deals, um, you know, strip centers. If you buy like a defunct strip center that's kind of vacant, you can probably find a bank that'll give you a bridge to a refi to a perm for that kind of a deal. Now, there are many other kinds of deals. There are perhaps other kind of loans you guys can talk about. So I want to get into some comments down below, questions you guys may have, because there's a ton of information we talked about here that we could chat about in the comment bar. So make sure to ask some questions or leave some comments for what you guys think about what I talked about today. Thank you guys for watching and have a great and profitable week.